Florida gubernatorial candidate Nikki Fried frames what is happening in Florida. Recently, at the LGBTQ plus Democratic Caucus here in Fort Lauderdale, Queer News Tonight anchor Al Ferguson spoke with Commissioner of Agriculture and gubernatorial candidate Nikki Fried about LGBTQ plus issues here in Florida. Well, we are at the Florida LGBTQ Democratic Caucus, and we have just listened to an amazing speech by somebody that needs absolutely no introduction. So I'll do the introduction. It's uh, Commissioner Nikki Freed, uh, the uh, Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer Services for Florida. Uh, of course, everybody in the LGBTQ uh, community knows uh, Nikki Freed as being an incredible advocate of our community and has the distinction, unfortunately, of being the only statewide office holder in the last decade. That is company that I would imagine you want to change. Without a doubt. Um, you know, I, I actually first thought when I first got elected that there was going to be an opportunity, that we're all going to kind of work together. Uh, we're all Kumbaya, under, Kumbaya, kind of Kumbaya. We're all under the age of 50, had younger families, this new generation. Right. I've never been so wrong about something in my entire life. Yeah, well, I don't know if your crystal ball uh, anticipated uh, he who shall not be named at the top in the uh, governor's mansion, but a lot of that was changed uh, to not be able to accomplish what you just said. I, I, a number of things. I, I kind of want to do a lightning round. Uh, I don't even have to talk about what an incredible advocate you are for the community and the stories of why you do it. It's just, we have reported on it so many times. It's, uh, it's, it's really motivational. Let's talk about some of the things that are right on top of us as we, uh, we approach uh, the primary uh, next month. First off, you just did the, um, uh, the NBC Telemundo debate. Yeah. Um, I was thrilled to get to watch a debate in Florida with two principals. Me, me too. It was like, it was, it was oh, like dragon. It was like dragon, you know. It, it was like, oh wait, we're gonna we're gonna have a conversation that's important. How did? Uh, uh, what was the experience like? What did you think? Uh, uh, after action kind of report of the debate. What did you think? Yeah, you know, it's uh, interesting. It was the first actual real debate that I've ever <clears throat> done in my life. I mean, I did speech and debate in high school, and I've obviously been a trial attorney, so I've done things like that, but. You know, so it's one of those things you kind of have to take in first. You're, like, you're running for governor of the state of Florida. Take in this moment. Um, but we felt we did exactly what I needed to do, showing the, the clear differences between myself and Charlie, um, showing the fighter that I am, that I stand up for what I believe in, and, and giving the Democrats the, the fight that we need in order to win in November. And, and I'm hoping that everybody saw the debate and realized that there was one choice. You know, I'm, I'm curious to that point. Uh, there was so much that I read in, in, in blogs and, and social media, which, which kind of caught me aghast of, there was lots of conversation about the starkness. Now, I, I'm not sure, but I think this is 2022, of a woman in a debate right. running for governor. And that people were talking about that, that there was a female, a young female presence. Does that just shock you that even in today we're even talking about that? It's heartbreaking that, that this is a part of the cell conversation, but you know, but I'm ready for that because look, I'm the first female to ever been elected commissioner of agriculture, not just in Florida, but across the entire Southeast. I'm used to breaking down glass ceilings. I was the first female state body president at the University of Florida in almost uh, two decades as well. Um, but yeah, it's 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 heartbreaking that I'm going to be the first governor of our state as a female. Uh, and hopefully, after this type of debate, these kinds of conversations, um, we won't have to have them again because it will be a normal occurrence uh, that women will be running from the highest offices of their states and across the country. Um, we are one of the only states that has not had a female governor. Uh, it's uh, it's really interesting. Third most populous state in the country, and we've never had female leadership in our, in our state. Um, we're going to do a story at Queer News tonight, this coming week, about the association between- Fight every day to, to get equal pay, uh, equal respect. I mean, women are still the, the um, right now, the, the head of the households in, regard, in regards to, to family and to bringing up the children. That, that responsibility still falls on the women. And so we ask women to do a lot. We ask us to intentionally raise our kids, go to work, take care of the house, you know, cook dinner, all these things that are still, you know, expected from women. And yet we're not respected that respect. And, and look what just happened in the Supreme Court. They took away our rights. You know, 50 years we've had the same right to privacy. And with one swoop decision, with five justices, that got taken away. And all we have to do now is, is vote again 
in record numbers, get more women elected into office. We can't trust our, our male counterparts to do it for us because we see where we've gotten uh, and, and we lead differently. So it's a time for the women to, to be running for office and for people to be voting for us. Another thing I wanted to ask you about that's going on in the state. Uh, this last week, uh, Liberty Moms uh, comes out of the woodwork and uh, Governor DeSantis goes and speaks at their conference in Tampa and the Democratic conference was going on in the same hotel. Very strange. Um, uh, Liberty Moms, but more importantly, um, you know, it, that is what it is uh, in America and in Florida. But um, Governor DeSantis's embracement, it seems like he's just going out of his way to say, uh, this is how I'm going to win not the governor's election, but I'm going to become president of the United States in 24. What do you think about what you're watching Governor DeSantis do in Florida? He, he's dividing our state. He's instilling hatred. He, he's, he's giving the, these individuals life um, to, to speak and spew the, the, the misconceptions of what's happening in our classrooms, what's helping it ha happening in our educational environment. And so what he's doing to us Floridians is he's using us to gain political points for his primary that he believes he's gonna be a part of in 2024 mm -hmm. to run for president of the United States. Mm -hmm. And what he's doing is he's the one who's indoctrinating our, our schools. I was just seeing what he's doing even to higher ed, that they're giving millions and millions of dollars to some of our higher ed systems to create a new civics lessons, kind of what we saw now in our K through 12 system. So that's what's called indoctrination. And instead of allowing for academic freedom, and so what he is doing is actually putting us back into a place where our founding fathers originally were, taking away rights, marginalizing people, telling them these are the people to blame. And I keep saying, and I said this in the debate, you know, that they're, they came for the black community, they're they came for the gay community, they're coming for women's rights. Who's next? Who's on the chopping block next? We're, taking, we're, we're banning books mm -hmm. in our state. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're banning the history of, of our state and our country. That is a very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I need people to start understanding. I'm not just speaking, you know, into hyperboles. This is happening today in the state of Florida in 2022. And I need everybody to, to wake up and to realize we have the power to change it, but not to be sitting on the couches. I'm curious your comment. Um, when uh, Don't Say Gay, uh, uh, we went through the first quarter debate in the, in the legislative session. Uh, it's only K through three. Uh, all we're talking about is K through three. And uh, um, you and many, many other uh, powerful voices argued of the vagueness of the bill. Um, just in the last uh, two weeks, Miami-Dade County Schools and Broward County Schools have donated all of their LGBT-themed books to the Stonewall National Museum here in Fort Lauderdale in a preemptive action of what's getting ready to happen on Don't Say Gay. So it seems to me the point is of the creep spread that is taking place here is is clear. Well, what's your reaction about Miami-Dade, which is a very blue school district, and Broward County, which is the bluest school district in Florida, still surrenders to Don't Sit Gay? Yeah, it, it's, it's scary because what's happening is that everybody's become scared of the governor because he goes after people. He, he takes revenge. He, he takes... Wait, are we talking about Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis? <laughs> Same person. <laughs> Same person. Right. But that he takes out vengeance that you know if you dare speak up against him he comes after you look what he did to those school boards during the pandemic you know threatening to take away money threatening to, to you know to pull people out of their positions and look what he did to disney and when he's on to the cruise line industry basically anybody who dare speaks out against him he goes after and so these school boards are trying to at least do their job but are scared of you know what are ramifications will be happening from the governor. LGBTQ community hears that observation loud and clear. It's anti-democratic. Um, so we hear you loud and clear what the dog whistle you're blowing of, of your concern here. Do you think the LGBTQ community is listening to you to the degree in the way that your dog whistle just blew? I do believe so. And the reason why I say that is, you know, we, we attended either in my official capacity or in my candidate capacity, nearly every single pride parade in, in the state of Florida um, in June and even some of the ones that happened. We yelled at you at Stonewall Pride. Yep. 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 So we, we were everywhere, um, had staff members or campaign myself um, or again in my official capacity and the energy that was out there those pride parades, um, the, the people, you know, saying, you know, we love you, Nikki, thank you. You felt 
that there was a movement happening on the ground, that people were coming out to these pride parades, and it wasn't just members of the gay community. There was gay allies that were out there too, understanding the gravity of the situation as well. So I think that the message is getting out there. Uh, we need to continue having it loud and clear, and it needs to not just come from the black community, or it doesn't need to just come from the Hispanic community, or from the gay community, or for women. It needs to come from all of us, mm -hmm. because we are all in line to, to lose our own freedoms and democracy if we don't stand united against this fascism and, and this oppressive behavior that's coming from the governor. And everybody needs to also understand and remember this, too. He only won by 33,000 votes. This is not a, a slam dunk. It's and, not a slam dunk. And it is not a slam dunk. There's 50,000 LGBT voters that didn't come out in the last governor's uh, election that could come out this time, which would win the election. And that would be that. It would be that. You know, I want to, uh, last thing I want to ask you about is uh, what the national news is. So the House uh, voted on uh, respect for marriage. Uh, were you surprised that 47 Republicans voted yes? Did that surprise you? It should have been everybody voting yes. I mean, this is 2022. There should have been no no votes. I, I mean, every, like, this is... You do I, wonder what they're voting no against. Yeah, they why, protected why? states' rights. It did everything that Justice Thomas wanted. Uh, and 158 voted no. But the, specifically the 47. Any surprise of that? Were you happy with it? Uh, you thought, well, that's a pretty good starting number. What was your reaction? I mean, my reaction is it showed that there was bipartisan support. Um, but it should have been unanimous. Yeah. I mean, this is, we, we are in 2022. You know, that right to privacy, the right to, to marry who you want to marry is now on the books. And, and, the, and granted, it's on the chopping block in the Supreme Court. But that is the sentiment of the nation. And if any of those elected... 82% are in favor of gay marriage in America. Every poll shows correct. 80 plus percent. And so I think it's time for America to wake up that your elected officials are going to, is going to either Tallahassee or to Washington, D.C. and not truly representing you. They're representing their own political ambitions. And so if you have an elected official who is not standing up for you, I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, Independent, if your elected official is not standing up for what you believe in, and I say the same thing on cannabis... You know, we are seeing 80% of America wants legalization, and yet we can't get it across the finish line in the Senate. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many things that, that, that the country has moved on, even on guns, has moved on, universal background checks, and yet we can't get it accomplished in the Senate. Mm -hmm. And I need also people, and I'm going to go on a soapbox for two seconds, of course. is that what I need people to understand that I get the frustration. I get the frustration that, that the American people have right now, that government is failing them, that, that you're seeing the, the dismantling of so many of our rights. You're seeing you know, what, what's happening in Washington, DC, the stagnation, and people wanna blame the party in power. You know who's in power right now? Five Supreme Court justices and Mitch McConnell. And, and so if you really truly want change People are going to have to go out and make sure that the, that the Democrats truly have a majority. We don't have a majority. You know, we've got 50. And unfortunately, we've got two senators um, who, depending on the and, issue. And I, I want to ask you about that specifically. Coming back to it's going to move. Uh, respect for marriage is going to move to the Senate. We may have it. it it's going to require 60 votes. Uh, we may have four or five Republicans, depending on who, who you believe so far. Uh, so right now it looks like it's 55-45 and will be defeated. Um, were you surprised this week that uh, Florida's Senator uh, Marco Rubio came out and said it basically was stupid uh, to be talking about gay marriage? Did they, it, it's not only... I'm not in favor of gay marriage. Even the discussion of gay marriage is stupid and irrelevant. Did that surprise you? Or is that just the talking points you've gotten to expect? The fact that a U.S. senator from a state as diverse as Florida, that is so diverse and has such a huge gay community here in our state, to call it stupid he needs to be removed from office. Uh, I mean, the fact is that, that- Well, there is one way to do that. Yes, there is. It's a Val Deming getting, getting in there. Right. Um, but yeah, it, it, it kind of, it, it's, it's sat on me in such an awful manner that we have somebody who represents our state taking that type of position. Either he's never talked to somebody who is a member of the LGBTQ community, um, or he just doesn't care. Regardless, that is not how we, the American people, and we Floridians are feeling. And again, he's showing that he does not represent us. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the two top uh, seats in Florida coming up in the midterms, of course, the governor seat, Nikki Freed, the Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer oh, oh. Services, running for that seat. 
and of course Val Demings uh, running for, and in the primary uh, with Charlie Chris, and then uh, Val Demings for uh, the U.S. Senate seat. And it trickles all the way down, all the way down to school boards and, and judges, uh, etc. cetera. Um, the question now is, uh, will the gay community get out there for, for these major seats over these important issues? Your thoughts, are they going to? Well, if we do our job and we come out to the community, we, we show our faces, we show our support, because we need the gay community to come out and vote. Because literally, their lives do depend on it. We still have sodomy on the books in Florida. In Florida. It's shocking. It is shocking. But if we don't understand that that is still on the books, and that if we don't put people in our elected offices that are going to either get make sure that it gets stripped out or it never gets enforced, or we make sure that there's no prosecution, lives are actually on the line. And, and so we need everybody to understand that and that your voice matters. Your vote is so essential in this election. I know we talk about it all the time, that this is the most important election of our lifetime, but this literally is. That we've got somebody who's currently sitting in the governor's office who is the greatest threat to democracy in modern history. I will debate anybody on he is more threatful than Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Donald speaks a lot. DeSantis makes it into action. Mm -hmm. Follows it up. So you're speaking to, as you said, one of the largest LGBTQ communities in the country in Florida. What would you like them to do? Look, I want you to get engaged. Um, I want you to get engaged in your local community. You've got a lot of great people running for local offices all over the state. Knowing what happened with the Dobbs, which is the road reversal, that the decisions that are happening now are into the state's hands. So it is really important that you know who your city and county commissioners are, making sure you know who your school board members are, your state representatives, your state senators, and of course, your governor and your U.S. Senate seat. So get engaged, sign up to, to volunteer for campaigns, talk to your friends, make sure that your friends are registered to vote, and then make a plan to vote. We need all hands on deck on this election. The power is back in your hands, um, not in Washington, D.C., but your hands. So please make sure you make a plan, get out and vote, and of course, support Democrats up and down the ballot because we're the ones who are going to protect your rights. Yeah, and uh, how do they uh, reach out, learn more about you? How do they help yeah. uh, in your participation? So go to NikkiFreed.com, which is N-I-K-K-I-F-R-I-E-D. On our website, not only has my platform issues, has all of my past records, but it also has my social media, all of my tags, uh, ways to volunteer. If you're inclined, uh, $5, give up a Starbucks for a day and, and donate to the campaign. Um, but really, it's all hands on deck. Yeah, all hands on deck. Uh, at Corner News tonight, we believe that, uh, uh, we believe that mantra. Uh, this literally is an election of a lifetime. Uh, Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer Services, Nikki Fried, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. You're very motivational. Uh, and uh, your support of uh, the LGBTQ community in Florida has been quite amazing. And we thank you for that. Of course, thank you. Coming from the Florida LGBTQ Democratic Caucus. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.